Hi everyone and welcome back to my New England story. If you're new here, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. I truly appreciate it. Well, it is a bit of a drizzly day here in New England. Things are finally starting to cool down and I thought it would be a good afternoon to uh, do a little bit of baking. And I wanted to present, introduce, a hermit cookie. Now, many of you may have heard of that before or are familiar with it. I was not. Um, I had never seen them until moving to New England. So I did a little bit of research because I was just curious and I want to read you a little bit uh, something here that I learned in, in my research. So it says, in a July 1888 article in the Springfield, Massachusetts Republican, Anna Barrows listed the perfect larder for a picnic, a hermit cookie, a spice cookie studded with fruit and nuts. So it is definitely a wholesome taste, meaning you do get, um, well, there's, there's molasses in it, so you certainly get that flavor. Um, it's not a fruit cake by any means. It's almost like a molasses cookie with what's supposed to be raisins. I'm not putting raisins in mine today because I don't like raisins. I am going to do figs and dates. But anyway, it's a dried fruit and nuts and a lot of spices, and it's so good. So it continues on to say she praised the hermit cookie as the ultimate in the convenience cookie. This will keep for months if out of humanity's reach, because they're so good, hence perhaps their name, the hermit. So you keep it out of everyone's reach. You have to hide them because they'll be gone. Uh, dozens of stories suggest that sailors coveted the cookies that would keep as they sailed clippers down the eastern seaboard and beyond. Others say that hermit bars came from the Cape Cod town of Harwich. If any of you know the story or uh, when you were introduced to them, let me know below, I am very interested. From Maine to Massachusetts, the hermit was a favorite offering in pantries and bake shops by the early 20th centuries. So, it has been around for a while out here. Um, I guess I would describe it as a wholesome cookie. So anyway, it's my first time making these. Uh, today I thought I would take you along with me on this little adventure. Um, the other thing that I have noticed out here when I've seen them in bakeries or in the stores, they're always cut in little squares. So I'm going to attempt that also today. Now if you've watched any of my other baking segments, you already know that I try to convert a lot of recipes into a gluten-free recipe because I have a daughter and she lives with us that is wheat intolerant. There is a difference um, in wheat intolerance and gluten-free. We don't have to be as careful. Now today I am substituting a regular white flour for an einkorn flour. I'm using jovial einkorn flour that is a heritage wheat. So it doesn't have the processing that a lot of our flours do today. And I'm also using the not only the einkorn flour but the einkorn wheat flour. I used it the other day uh, when I made a banana bread and it had such a luscious nutty flavor so I'm going to try that again today I thought it would be good in this cookie the other substitution um, the other substitution that I am making is I am going to use a coconut sugar in lieu of just your typical white sugar it um, it's a little lower on the glycemic index and it's just a preference of mine. Again, I thought it would be good in these cookies. So let's go ahead and get started and 
hopefully they'll turn out. Now I've been baking for many years and in watching all of the cooking or baking shows, obviously other people are doing it for them, but I've noticed how they pre-measure everything. And I started doing that. I love it because I know it takes a little bit of time at the beginning, but then you, you know you have everything out in the recipe. Everything is pre-measured. Um, and honestly, it makes it quite easy. It may be a little bit more cleanup, but that's okay. So today we're going to start out. Um, I have pre-measured here my flour, my einkorn flour, along with the spices. And it says just to whisk that together. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I am going to set that aside. Now, I have not pre-eated... I have not preheated my oven simply because once we make the dough, we are going to refrigerate it for 30 minutes. Okay, so now we are going to cream the butter and sugar until light and fluffy. And I'm going to grab a knife here just so I can cut this up. I am using an unsalted butter. It's Kate's. It's actually from Vermont. And look at the packaging. Isn't that cute? You have lobster, the little welly boots, an old barn. I don't know. I'm a sucker for packaging. So let's just put this in our bowl. And I'm just slicing that up into smaller pieces so hopefully it will cream a little quicker. And then we're going to add in our sugar. And again, as a reminder today, I am using coconut sugar. So let's get that going here. And now we're going to add in our molasses and then the egg. Try and get every little bit out. This, I know, is what adds some of that luscious richness to the cookie. Let's add in the egg. And then we're going to mix that together. Now I'm going to gradually add in the sour milk, which again, that is just milk with one and a half teaspoons of vinegar added. And now we will gradually add in our flour mixture, the flour and the spices. I'm going to get a larger spatula. Scrape those sides down a little. Add in a little more flour. It smells luscious. All of those spices, the ginger, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, oh. 
It smells and feels like fall. Get every little morsel. Okay, and continue mixing. Now we're just going to stir in the dates and figs. So here's the story. <laughs> like I said, it, the recipe calls for raisins. So if you like raisins, please add that in. However, I decided to do dates. When I went to the cupboard and pulled out my dates, I noticed that my daughters had gotten into them. I thought I had a whole bag of them, but they got into those. They love having them. They slice them open because I get the pitted ones. They slice them open. They put a little bit of peanut butter, maybe a couple of chocolate chips, and that's a little snack for them. So I had sun-dried organic figs. I decided to add those along with the dates. So that's what we're going to do. I think it will be very good. I'm just going to stir that in gradually. <laughs> Okay, now I am going to put the dough in some saran wrap and we are going to put that in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. The reason you refrigerate it is you do want the dough to be a little firmer because you are going to slice them. Uh, I'm going to make it in somewhat of a rectangular or square shape in lieu of just round because, of course, you have to make them like I've seen them. And they have to be square. They just won't taste the same if they're round. <laughs> of course, I'm joking, but anyway, there she is. She's ready. She smells luscious. And let's just cover it up and put that in the refrigerator. Okay, there we go. Now, some of you may have spotted my candle going in the background, so I just wanted to show you. That's a Farman C. And it's apple wood. It smells lovely. It's not too strong. Uh, it's definitely apple with a bit of a um, evergreen balsam scent. I love it. I just got that the other day at a store in Concord, New Hampshire called Homebody. But this company, I have showed you them before. They're out of Massachusetts. If you go back, I do have a New England gift guide video and I show you some of my favorite things. So anyway, I just wanted to share that. I got those pumpkins yesterday. I don't know. I'm starting a little bit of fall decor, but I don't know. I, <laughs> With it being so warm, I just could not get into the mood. So here's a little bit of this. I'll insert a better picture of that. Okay, we're back. We got the dishes done and put away, the mixers put away, and now I got the dough out of the refrigerator. So let's put it on. I did dust my cutting board with just a little bit of flour, and I have my, let me show you here, I have the cookie sheets lined with parchment, and so we're going to slice these up and put them on the cookie sheets. Okay, so I have to say the dough was a bit sticky. So I added another, I would say, almost half a cup of flour and worked that in. Now, I think the problem was the dough was meant to be 
you know, just scooped with a, uh, with, it was meant to just be scooped with a cookie scoop and I wanted to slice them. So I needed to add a little more flour. So I was able to do that, but otherwise, hopefully they will turn out. Okay, so here they are on the baking sheet. Um, the dough is a bit sticky. I'm a little disappointed. I will link the recipe below that I followed. Like I said, the only difference I made, I did change out the flour, but typically that's a one for one. That is not an issue. And I changed out the sugar, that was it. But the squareness here is the shape that I wanted. So we are going to bake these and see what happens. I did want to mention, it has gotten awfully humid here this afternoon. Um, I do believe there are storms going on in the area. We're just getting rain here, but as you can see by my hair, <laughs> it's going a little crazy. That could possibly be the reason for the sticky dough. I don't know. The temperatures in the kitchen certainly have gone up. I don't know if that will matter or not. I should have left it in the refrigerator just a little longer, but I was anxious to get them in the oven in case we lose power. The dough tastes really good. I did take a little bit of a taste and uh, the spices are coming through beautifully. So let's get them in the oven and fingers crossed they come out okay. It's such a beautiful morning here, so I thought I would go ahead and come out to my little secret garden and fill you in what I ended up doing with the hermit cookies. So I wasn't super pleased with how those turned out. They tasted wonderful. Um, I was just looking for a more dense cookie and I wanted the bar shape because that's what I see when I'm around here in New England for the hermits. So I found another recipe that does not use the sour milk. I think that was the key to my fluffy cookies. So um, the soured milk part of it, I was finding in a lot of the old, more traditional New England recipes. I did find one and I will link it below um, that I wanted to try. And, and honestly, it was the same recipe. It just eliminated that soured milk. So I made up the dough last night. I put it in an eight by eight because I wanted more of a bar in lieu of a cookie. I wanted that square shape because that's what I see. And um, we're gonna bake them this morning. I left them in the refrigerator overnight so that dough does get very chilled. And uh, I'm hoping they're gonna turn out to be more of what I was looking for. So. We're gonna go in as soon as I finish my coffee here and we're gonna put those in the oven. And I just wanted to say too, you know, baking is, baking can be a lot of trial and error. You do have to be precise with your measurements in baking. It's That's different from cooking, but it can be a lot of experimentation. And I am not a professional cook or baker by any means. I'm just a homemaker trying to, um, convert normal recipes into gluten-free for my daughter that's intolerant to wheat. So let's go inside. Let's go ahead and bake those. I'm anxious to see how they turn out and uh, fingers crossed. Let's hope it works. Okay, this looks promising. Let's check it out and cut into it. I think I'm going to do it. No. So I hope you can see the texture. 
I just, that is more of what I was looking for. I'm gonna taste it. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. This is my keeper recipe. If you wanna try it, go ahead and link below. I do want to mention, I did not bake it quite as long as the recipe says. And every oven is different. Some people like a more crisp cookie. I like a ooey gooey, chewy <laughs> cookie or brownie or whatever. So kind of judge that. Honestly, if it says to bake 10 to 15 minutes, I just keep an eye on it. I typically, because of my oven, I don't bake as long as a recipe calls for. You have to do, you have to use your own judgment on that and just keep checking. But for me, this is a keeper recipe. I hope you enjoy. If you do try it, please let me know. And uh, here's our hermits. Now I know everyone on social media is already decorated for fall, but not me. <laughs> I'm running a little behind, to be totally honest. It's still been quite warm here, and I just haven't been in the mood until this week. It has started to cool down, and so I have started to get out some things, and I'm going to be sharing a little bit of that with you now. Now here are two of my most recent consignment finds. The first is this chair. I purchased it at Twin Elm in Peterborough and I just love it. It's a linen material and I love the wings on it. It's just perfect for this spot in my library to curl up with a book. And I was so excited to find this at a consignment store. Uh, it was the deal of the century. It was $4 and I was so happy because I've been looking for one for years. Now once I get more of my fall things out, I certainly will share with you in future videos. But thank you so much for watching, friends. I hope you have a wonderful week and we will see you next time.